So that is um, intensity of transmission. Okay, that was sort of the first step that we just worked through. And so um, just be thinking about that. You know, you want you want to be um, really transmitting uh, with an intense positive vibe as much as you can when you're thinking about your dreams and goals. Okay, um, so you can future pace on your own at home. You can write out what we what you share with your partner. You can write that out. Do it in front of the mirror, out loud, a couple times a day. Get into that upbeat, you know, happy place. So that it's, it can be feel a little bit like theater, you know. Or sometimes, you know, you can even feel like, oh, do I have to do it again? But we have to get in. We can be lazy about our dreams and goals sometimes, you know. And we have to. One of the hardest things we have to do when we are going after our dreams is to be um, strong in our uh, pursuit in our thoughts and not get lazy with our thoughts, right? To stay strong in what we're thinking and how we're thinking and, and how often we're thinking, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about is, is um, the frequency of transmission, right? So how often are you thinking about your dreams and goals? Are you, are you thinking about them and then putting them away for a while? Um, you know, because if we really wanna go after something, we have to stay in the game. We have to stay connected to that dream, that goal every day. And even um, uh, as much as you can during the day, right? But sometimes I know you can get caught up in, you, you know, your traffic. That driver makes you mad because he's driving so slowly. And you need to get somewhere. And then, you're, and then you're off on some tangent of irritability, right? Which is totally takes you in the opposite direction of your dreams and your goals. And this a higher purpose, right? I mean, that's how I look at it. In my own life, I keep going after new, new things because I feel like I have a higher purpose, and I'm not there yet. I mean, I'm probably never going to be there. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep searching and seeking. But I know that I, I, that's what I need to do, right, to fulfill my destiny, to fulfill my potential. But we can get sidetracked um, by experiences we have day to day or interactions that we have or even thoughts, right? We allow our thoughts to create an experience that doesn't serve us at all, you know, or we, we create, we make something up. That isn't even true, right? Yeah, we laugh because we just like, oh, who's that? For? Why did they look at me that way? Or, you know, why didn't they respond to my text message? Um, or why didn't they, right? And then there's stories that then just like totally, that are probably not even true, that are, you know, taking you away from what's really important and what your life is really meant to be about. And so you have to think about, um, the frequency of staying connected. So using tools that help you stay connected. Does anybody have any good, good ways that you have right now that you would willing, willing to share about how you stay connected to what's important in your life? Okay. Yeah, Tammy. Um, I had a goal of starting to read more um, like books that had more meaning to me. So whether it's the Bible because I'm learning or um, um, self, some other self-help books. I decided that I keep looking at these books, but I never do it during the day. So when my husband gets up really early in the morning, as soon as he leaves, I make coffee. And we're talking 4.30 in the morning. And wow. I have an hour and a half of reading time. With no coffee, nice. it becomes my, my little ritual. So That's great. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was just, there's a couple, a friend of mine wrote about her, her, her early morning ritual and how important those that are an early morning or morning ritual can be for how you set your day up. Like you can lie in bed and and even future pace your day. Think about how you want your day to go, right? So and then watch how when you think about how you want your day to go, it starts to go that way, right? When you really focus on what it is you want to bring in or set an intention for your day before you get up. Does anybody else have anything they want to share that works for them right now about staying connected to what's important and your dreams? I'll offer something because it's 10 minutes <laughs> instead of an hour and a half. Um, and it's sitting meditation in the morning, which begins with a conscious noting of how I'm feeling right from the beginning of the day and, um, and setting an intention for that 10 minute period of meditation. Um, and I find that it really is a, a way to, as you just put it, and to just create a tone um, for what's going to happen throughout the day. Mm. And for me, it's been humbling to just come to 
terms with the fact that, that 10 minutes really might be all I have and that it is adequate, mm -hmm. that, that there's a great deal of uh, potential in that amount of time mm -hmm. to make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Does anybody uh, be willing to share some things that you do that you know don't serve you? <laughs> Take a little risk, put it out there. Yeah, Julie. So it just happened, and it's just oh, <laughs> negative energy stuff. Um, the thinking about what I should have said. Mm -hmm. back. Like, you know, when you're having an exchange with somebody, yeah. and then afterward, the spending gosh knows how long, like thinking, replaying it, yeah. the replaying it. In yeah. Mind. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, that can be really counterproductive. Um, a, a little tool that I'll share with you and for everybody, it's helpful. When you start to go down a path that's really not feeling good or serving you thought-wise, cancel, cancel. Just say, cancel, cancel. And just, you might have to say it a bunch of times, but cancel, cancel, right? So you're, 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 you're um, interrupting, interrupting, because what happens is when we get into the negative thought pattern, it feeds itself. Right, as does the positive. Right, when you get in, when I get into a cycle of gratitude, which I've been working on a lot over the last four or five years, really focusing heavily on gratitude, and then when I got involved with this company, it just sort of ramped it up even more, and a really massive shift for me because I used to be a glass half empty person. I would see what was negative. I complain about the weather. Um, I don't even look at the weather forecast anymore. I don't even know what's happening in the weather practically. I mean, it's, it seems like a mundane example, but for me, it was it was that's a profound example of how I've shifted, and I'm just not you know I'm not getting caught up as much in the day to day stuff that used to I used to get mired, and I used to find things to be negative about and looking for gratitude. So anything that you're whether it's positive or negative, it can go and get its own momentum going. So cancel, cancel is a conscious way you're acknowledging because you could just be doing it subconsciously sometimes. We have these tracks, these neural pathways that are so grooved and we get on them and it's like when you drive home and you don't even realize how you've gotten home because you've been so checked out because you know the path so well. Mm -hmm. We have those paths in our brain. You know, we know them so well that we're doing them like we're not even conscious we're doing them. So cancel, cancel, it seems so simple, but it's really helpful just to interrupt that process. Mine is, I always think of a really good joke or one-liner. I'm like, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> I do that, what you said, too. But I also do, oh, that would have been a really funny line. Because <laughs> I, lo I love humor. I love being funny. I love being around funny people. Um, okay, anybody else have something they know is not really serving them? I'm going to bring it back to a positive thing, but kind yeah, of a negative good. thing. But I learned it for, during your cleanse. Um, and I think it was in the Louise Hayes book. Um, in this past year, there's been a whole lot of stress in my life, and I've been divorced twice, and I get these tracks in my head, like, you know, oh my god, I can't believe you didn't listen to it, blah, blah. and I learned how to kind of, once I start that, I, I stop and I go, I forgive you for dismissing me when I said that. I forgive you for, you know, whatever the, the perseveration is in my head. I, it's like the cancel, cancel, or that reminds yeah. me of that. I forgive you for, um, you know... What, whatever, there's like a million things. And it really interrupts and stops that perseveration and heals. It, you know, it feels stronger afterwards. Yeah, yeah you tell me about that. That's great. I mean, yeah. And you've been doing repetition, too, because you've been listening to Louise Hay in the car, right? So you, yeah. that was a great example of a tool, you know, or something you've been utilizing. Yeah. When you have time by yourself in the car, or if you have younger, younger kids who, you know, are just kind of checked out anyway, um, they, they'll get that. You know, Coral, the founder of the company, talks about how when she didn't have any money and she's driving around her Ford Taurus and didn't have anybody positive in her life, she would put in these, these tapes, these audios, these, you know, this, these positive, um, affirmative, life-changing type audios, and her kids were really little, and she would just drive around and listen, and now her kids are, you know, they're not that old, but they're older, and they're really great at manifesting, and she's now driving a Bentley, not a Ford Taurus, and she's really <laughs> changed her life massively in a very short amount of time. Um, by really putting things into play and being really committed and focused and you know nobody is going to stop her kind of mentality because that's you kind of have to have that mentality when you're going after your dreams because honestly the reality is when you're really going for it in your life you're going to find great people that are going to support you but you're going to find people who don't like that because they're scared and they don't they're scared to do it so they're going to try and keep you down yeah. and so you know you have to be really committed you have to really sort of 
not that you don't care, but you have to just let, let it go with people or what they're thinking of you. You know, or what they're trying to do. There's a guy who's um, one of the leaders in our company, and he talked about how when he quit his job and started selling things on eBay after he lost he lost his job, no money, and he started selling things on eBay, and his mom was completely critical. Like, what are you doing? How can you quit your job? I can't believe you're doing it. And then within a few years, it was um, a multi-million dollar company that they created on eBay. And then he, they were on the front page. He and his now wife were on the front page. They became business partners, girlfriend, boyfriend, business partners, married now. And when they were on the front page of their local newspaper, she called and said, I knew you could do it, you know. But, but you know, he said it was, it was his way of love. It was her way of loving him. That was how she knew how to love him. So it's not that people are trying to be mean. It's that they don't know how to get out of their own way. And so the way they can love you sometimes doesn't feel very good. So, you know, you have to just... You know, it has to be that important, and your commitment has to be that big, you know, to, to stay true to it. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's really, it's important to think about how often are you thinking about your dreams and goals, and, um, you know, that it's happening for you, you're not going to do it 24-7, because sustaining thought, like one of our suggested homework assignments a couple weeks ago was to go find, you know, figure out our dream, our goal, and sit down and think about it, nothing else but that for three hours. And he's like, I know none of you are going to do it because it is impossible practically. Right? Sustained thought and the same thing for even a few minutes can be really hard. You know, our minds are moving. But so, but to have little triggers in your day, whether it's on your phone, um, written down on pieces of, you know, sticky notes in your car or on your house that remind you to Focus on your dream for a few minutes to really, and, and do it as if it's already happened. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. You can future pace it, right? You know, that's even more powerful when you're, when you're transmitting as if it's already happened and you're feeling that feeling of what it will feel like when you have this, what you're looking for, right? And then we're just always, we, we hit our goal, we set a new goal, right? We just keep moving. We keep moving. And then another great one from our class this past week was, because he was saying, you know, I want you guys out of your comfort zone. Life is lived out of the comfort zone. You know, that's when you're going to really have success out of the comfort zone. Um, he called it the terror barrier, exhilaration, then comfort zone. That's sort of the cycle you're, you're looking for in your life. That you, you know, you're feeling that fear, but you're doing it anyway. That's one of my favorite quotations, feel the fear, but do it anyway. And then you're exhilarated because it's like you're leaping, you're in midair. There's that trapeze analogy that I've used a lot in my coaching practice where you see that trapeze or you've been on one long enough and you see the one that's coming up ahead, but you don't know how to get there and you don't know if you're going to crash on the rocks and you just got to let go and go for it. You know, we've all been there at one point or another, multiple points in our lives. And somehow you get there, right? And it's, and it's incredible. You're like, oh my gosh, everything seems to be lining up when you're there. Because you're, you're, you're in the zone. You know, it's like in, in sports. It's kind of that type of thing, but it's more spiritual. You're in the zone when you're in that leap. And it is. It's exhilarating. But he wanted us, our homework assignment was to jump out of a plane this week. Um, and I'm, I'm going to. It's not going to happen this week, but I am going to jump out of a plane. But I'm doing some things out of my comfort zone this week. So that's keeping me on my edge. So that, that's really important, you know, to think about how are you... Pushing, you know, how are you? You don't have to push all the time, but when it's time to push, are you pushing? You know, we all know when we are sort of too tight in our shell and we get scared and we feel like fear starts to run the show. Like, you know, that's why you feel the fear and do it anyway. Fear is just a, a, a sign that you need to make a move, right? And the more you stay in the fear, the more fear builds. You make a move through fear and then the fear dissolves, right? So the next thing we're going to work on, the third step, and I'm not doing a very good job with my, <laughs> my flipping here, so uh, we're surviving without it, though. All right. Let me get caught up here. All right. So here we go. So step number three is the level of resistance. So the first two steps that we've done are really important, but if we don't work on the things that are holding us back, the thoughts... The, um, the blocks that we have in our life that are just there. They've been there since you were a child. They've been there since a divorce. They've been there since you've had the same arguments with your partner, whatever it is. Um, we need to be able to release the blocks. Okay, so I'm actually, some of you are that in my class. We did it together on the phone, and I led you, but I'm going to teach you how to do it for yourself. So we're going to do muscle testing. 
All right, so I want everybody to make a circle with um, your non-dominant hand between your index and your thumb. So muscle testing is, you know, it's a common practice used in <coughs> acupuncturists who use it or um, some chiropractors, osteopaths, you know, it's a technique that's out there. So I want you to make the circle as tight as you can, okay, and then take the same fingers from your dominant hand mm -hmm. and try and pull the circle apart. So you're keeping the circle tight as hard as you can and try and pull it apart, okay? You shouldn't be able to pull it apart. All right, so now I want you to say yes and try and pull it apart. Just in your head, just say yes and try and pull it apart. And then I want you to say no and try and pull it apart, okay? So when you say no, your fingers are going to come apart either a little bit or a lot, okay? So yes and no, okay? So, so we're going to use this to help you figure out, um, we're going to clear a big block right now that's in your life. I don't know what it is. You're going to figure out what it is. So I want you to think about um, an experience you've had in your life that was really terrible. Whether it's the worst thing you ever experienced or one of the worst things you've ever experienced, okay? So I want you to think about that and just raise your hand when you have that um, in mind, whatever that experience is. I know everybody's got one. So, it just, I mean, don't, don't overthink it, just something that comes to mind that was not pleasant, right? That you just didn't, would not want to go back and do that again. Does anybody not have one? I mean, not that I haven't had problems, I just don't ever focus on them, so I can't think of them. Which is probably a good thing, I would assume. <laughs> well, I have one that I thought of that you've talked about. <laughs> okay. Should I, let me tell you? Yeah. Okay, so stuff with your brother and your sister. So, I, would, I think you have some, some clearing you could do on that. Just based on what I've heard you say. Okay. Okay. So if that doesn't resonate, then just keep thinking. But so what we're going to do now is you're going to go through, and if it's a, if it's if the experience is relative to a person, you can muscle test the person, right? So you just say their name, and if your fingers come apart, that means there's a weakness in your field. It weakens your energy field. Okay. And so um, so figure find find a block. So whether it's a person's name. <laughs> Or if it's not in a name, then, then start going through some emotions, maybe anger or anxiety. Um, but come up with something, okay? You said it means a what? It, it weakens your energy field, okay? So like if you have if you have the same if you have a repetitive argument with your spouse or partner, and you don't clear that, you're when you're with that person, they're going to weaken your field a bit because you're, you have, you're still carrying that, okay? So we want to, um, and you know, we're not going to do a lot of the clearing tonight, but you're going to learn how to do it so you can go home and continue to work on clearing. You know, I'll just sometimes, if I'm in the morning, I'll just do, and I'm feeling anxious about something or at bedtime, I'll just start to do what we're going to teach you how to do, the breathing and the clearing. Um, just, you know, it doesn't, take, it doesn't have to take very long, but just throughout the day. Um, you know, you don't want to get overly hung up on, you know, constantly clearing, but it's, a, it's an important tool to clear the path so that you have more access to where you want to head, towards your dreams and your goals, and that the old stuff isn't, isn't holding you down. So does everybody have something that was weak for you in that experience? Okay. All right, so now I want you to write this phrase down. So you're going to write it down on your paper, and the statement is, I forgive and release all positive and negative emotional blocks with. Okay, the with, you're going to fill that in with whatever you came up with. That was, you know, that, that, that person, that name, that, that emotion, that Whatever it was that was weak for you, that's your wit, okay? And then in a moment, I'm going to teach you what we're going to do. We're going to do the actual clearing part, which is a breathing technique, okay? This is called the subconscious release technique. Um, founder of the company, Coral Grant, developed this technique based on some other things she learned, created this. Um, you know, some of you may have heard of uh, like emotional freedom technique, tapping. Um, it sort of does the same thing that that does. It's just a little, you know, it's just quick and dirty a way to get to releasing stuff that's holding you back. So in a moment, you're going to take a deep breath in, and you're going to hold it, and you're going to say that phrase in your head. 
Okay, I forgive and release all positive and negative emotional blocks with whatever it is for you. And then I'll, um, you'll hold it until I instruct you to breathe it out. When you breathe it out, you're going to breathe it out strongly through an open mouth, audibly. <sighs> okay? So the idea is like you're pushing it away from you. Okay? You're pushing it away. You're letting it go. And we're going to do three rounds of that same clearing with that same situation or person. Okay? Or feeling. Does that make sense? Mm hmm Okay. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So take a really deep breath in and hold it. And say that phrase to yourself. I forgive and release all positive and negative emotional blocks and with. And sigh it out. Good, excellent. Breathe in again. Hold it and say to yourself, I forgive and release all positive and negative emotional blocks with. Inside out. Good, one more. I forgive and release all positive and negative emotional blocks. Biff. And let it go. Good. Okay. So hopefully there's a little bit of lightness there that you're feeling. Um, but if it's, it was a really intense event, you know, you're, you're going to go home and you're going to need to do some more testing. Go through, you know, some feelings. Go through other people in your life, important people in your life, people that you live with, okay? You know, there may be some stuff, you, it probably is stuff you need to clear, you know? We carry stuff that we don't even realize sometimes. Okay, so we're not done there. We're going to do a fill-up, okay? Because the key here is we've created this void now. You put that down. It's gone unless you pick it back up. So we want to put something really positive in, okay? So we're going to do the same breathing technique. And we're going to say, I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful that I am at peace with. And then you're going to add the with. That's so you can write that down. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I'm completely at peace with. So happy, thankful, and grateful. I'm completely at peace with. Same, same topic? Mm-hmm. So whatever the width was before, you still is filling it in the same way, right? Can you say that one more time? Sure. I am so happy, thankful, and grateful. I am completely at peace with. Sure. Okay. So we're ready to do the fill-ups. So we're going to do it three times as well. Deep breath in. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I'm completely at peace with. And let it go. Good again. Deep breath in. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I'm completely at peace with. And let it go. Good. Last one. So happy, thankful, and grateful. I'm completely at peace with. And let it go. Good. So in our company, when we do this work, we can get pretty specific with the stuff that we're releasing. You know, we're doing it a little more generally tonight, but we can really change the phrasing and really get very detailed and specific with, with releases. So, you know, you may not be done with that actual person or that thing completely yet. You may need to get into some emotions around it if it was a person. So, you know, just take some time. And like I said, don't over, you know, don't spend all your time doing the releasing of blocks. You know, the, the transmission and the frequency of transmission and the intensity of transmission is also really important. There are three parts, right? Because it's not one isn't more important than the other. It's feathering the three together that it creates the power of helping you um, to create the dreams that you're trying to create and the goals that you're trying to reach, right? So... Um, does, do folks feel like you've gotten some good tools tonight? Some valuable, yeah. Yeah. valuable experience? <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Good. So the key now is to, you know, do it. Is to take the time to do it. Like I said, you know, it's that, that laziness that, or, or fear of, you know, actually getting your dreams, right? You know, the Marianne Williamson quotation mm -hmm. that Nelson Mandela sort of took over, that 
you know, our, our fear isn't about, we're not afraid of our greatness, we're, 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 we're afraid of our greatness, you know, that we shy away from that. So this is all about moving towards our greatness, you know, and not shying away from that, and letting our light shine as brightly as they can. So we're going to um, switch gears a little bit here, and I'm going to ask you a question, and just answer honestly. Would you like to know more about um, what it might look like to be involved with this company, the Secret to Life Coaching Company? So, just raise your hand if you would like to hear some more. And what do you mean in terms yeah. of like... Yeah. Well, like the classes and just what we're, what we're up to. If you'd like to hear more about, you know, where all this stuff is coming from. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, you, if you, you're totally welcome to go. Like, there's no pressure. You don't have to stay anymore. You can, oh. you can, I know, I mean, but I want, no, no, seriously, no judgment. I know, I just, I really want people to stay that want to hear about it. And if, if you don't, if it doesn't res, if it, like, if it doesn't resonate with you what we just did, like, what I'm going to share with you isn't going to resonate with you, right? Right, right? So, if it resonated with you, then, then, yeah, and you want to hear it, that's great. Please, please stay, you know, if this felt good to you. Because this is a lot of what we, we do, you know, is this type of work is central to um, this company. So. Can I get some crackers and still stay? Yes. You can. <laughs> okay. So why don't we pause for a second and you can get no some crackers. more water and crackers. <laughs>